Hello friends. In this video tutorial, we are going to see the recombinational DNA repair of stalled replication fork. Now, replication fork is an important machinery which helps uh, to proceed the DNA replication very, very carefully. Because the replication fork helps to simultaneously replicate both of the strands at the same time. So, this is the structure of replication fork. So, it, it just looks like this Y shaped structure. Now, this is the leading strand of the DNA, this is the lagging strand of the DNA, we can look at the synthesis. But right after the some time, what can happen? Uh, it may result, any kind of chemical or uh, radiational damage can occur into the DNA. As a result of that, we can find the DNA lesion formation sometimes, or sometimes the DNA leak. Anything can happen. So, lesion is uh, some extra nucleotide sequences which are bulging out. Neak is a loss of nucleotide sequences in, s uh, in, in some region or some segment of the DNA. Both of them can lead up to the stalling of replication fork because replication fork cannot pass through any kind of DNA lesion or DNA neak unless they are treated. Okay. So, uh, most of these DNA lesions uh, are uh, remedied with the help of nucleotide excision repair systems and base excision repair systems. But these DNA nicks can be sealed with the DNA ligase and the DNA polymers and ligase uh, utilizing them. But recombinational DNA repair can be a very, very handy tool uh, to go against all this type of uh, abnormalities or DNA abnormalities and can lead up to the synthesis of the DNA again. Now, how they can achieve that? Let's look at this picture. Now, here at the left hand side, we are dealing with the DNA lesion, and the right hand side, we are dealing with the DNA nick. Okay. Now, here. Now, uh, replication fork moves on and thi in this direction. After some time, it, enc it encounters the DNA lesion. Now, as it encounters the DNA lesion in this region, it starts to revert back. That means you can see here when it reaches and uh, sends this DNA lesion, it no longer continues the journey in this direction. It no longer continues the journey, but instead it reverts its direction. It reverts its direction and it utilizes the other strand, other new strand or other newly synthesized strand as its, subst uh, as its template to synthesize new DNA strands. Understand? Now you can see this is a new newly synthesized strand in this uh, in this strand. Sorry, newly synthesized strand here. This is the new one, and this is also the new one. Now this new red color strand, as it senses the DNA lesion, it utilizes the opposite, which is uh, the orange color here, opposite newly synthesized DNA strand as its template, as you can see in this picture, to synthesize the DNA segments continuously in the reverse direction from where they begin their journey. Here they are going the reverse direction. At the beginning they started in this direction. Now they are going in this direction. Utilizing the newly synthesized opposite stands uh, as their template strand. Now, as they are going in such a way, after some time when they synthesize a pretty long stretch of DNA segment, they again cleave the hydrogen bonds between these two strands they cleave the bonds between these two strands and they again pair these nucleotide sequences with the original parent strands that means these two strands they pair again now a question can be arised that uh, as a result of this DNA template what can happen this lesion region still cannot be able to bind with the newly synthesized DNA strand the answer is yes this is a problem. Uh, the newly synthesized strand may not have uh, the appropriate binding with the lesion region, but that's fine uh, because this kind of repair system is called the error prone repair system. That means if a DNA or if the cellular organization takes the responsibility to go with this DNA lesion, then it is called the error prone repair or SOS repair system. Okay, but if they need to remove this DNA lesion, they must go with the excision repair systems like nucleotide excision repair or base excision repair. Okay, but once they do not have all access to this kind of proteins which are needed for base excision repair or nucleotide excision repair, and they need to go it uh, go through this DNA replication very very fast, they must go with this recombinational model. Only in those conditions they go with this recombinational model. Otherwise, they normal times in normal cases they go with the base excision and nucleotide excision repair systems okay now let us focus on the right hand side 
Now, if uh, the replication faults are moving and then it find uh, the DNA gap in some of its strand. Now, due after reaching, uh, so it is synthesizing in this direction. After reaching this DNA nick, uh, the fork collapses. That means the fork can no longer move because there's a single strand. It can dissociate. After the dissociation, we can find we can end up with one long stranded DNA, one short stranded DNA here. Now, what can what they can do is that this these strands, uh, both of the newly synthesized strands, can be exchanged with each other with the help of a homolo homology. That means this newly synthesized strand, this lower strand, can go upward with the help of the strand invasion technique. Uh, it will need some of the proteins of homologous recombination, which are REC A, which is a filamentous protein which will bind to the single stranded DNA and guide it to the opposite uh, DNA of the homology to bind with it which is called uh, the strand invasion and also some reg bcd protein which helps in the branch migration now strand invasion is done then the branch migration is uh, done with the help of uh, the newly synthesizing dna strand and new nucleotides are coming and these new strands are synthesizing in this direction after some times uh, some type of synthesis and this strand is also getting synthesized in this direction so after some time of synthesis they lead up to this function of this holiday model or holiday junction now this holiday junction must be resolved and the resolution in this case must be done in a single one way and the resolution is the horizontal direction. So if we cut in, in this horizontal direction, we end up with the formation of a uh, DNA segment which is having this replication fork which is totally fully functional. So this patch of the sequence is totally new which is uh, recombined with the opposite strand but uh, as a result of this recombination they are repairing or uh, they are able to repair they have able to repair this TNS single strand nick and they can s continue synthesizing the strand okay so in this processes we need rec a rec b c d uh, during the strand invasion and also we need uh, rav uh, rec b c d for branch migration we also need the rav a b and rav c complexes for the resolution but in case of denylation uh, recombination and repair in this case we need rec a and rec a4r uh, for uh, the production of uh, recombination and repair for 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 the strand invasion and branch migration and we need polymerase 1 which helps in the replication process okay so these are the steps of how we can go against uh, this kind of problems like dna relation and dna nick but remember dna relation if we need to cure the denylation, we must go with the excision repair. But if we cannot access to the excision repair systems, then only we can take other processes like recombination repair systems. Okay, and remember, REC A is very important because it will uh, be loaded onto the single stranded DNA. And uh, for the loading of REC A onto the single stranded DNA, we must have REC A, REC O, and REC R. So these are the proteins which help them to load REC A onto the single stranded DNA, then strand invasion, then the branch migration with the help of REC B C D, and then the finally the resolution. The resolution in case of single stranded NIC repair must be carried out in the horizontal direction to get the desired product. Okay, so that's it, and I hope it will help you. Thank you.